This video is presented by Pop Culture Zone and PopCultureZone.com. We all know the key to graded books is getting those books cleaned and pressed. And with over 8,000 books cleaned and pressed in the last year alone, and that low, low price of $5.99, Pop Culture Zone is the place to go before you get your books graded. So to find out more, head to PopCultureZone.com. What's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Some Men's Comics, and they've made it to another Friday night. So, of course, that means one thing. Get those glasses high in the sky, because it's time for Last Call. Hey guys, I hope everyone had a great week. We had a great new comic book day. We are heading full force into San Diego Comic-Con. We'll be having some short highlight videos on this channel covering San Diego Comic-Con, won't we? Absolutely, yeah. We're going to try to give you all of the bullet point news and how it's going to affect the comic market in the coming days. So if you guys are watching this Friday night, make sure you also check the channel for some of those videos. We'll have them up from Thursday night all the way through the weekend covering up San Diego Comic-Con. But with that being said, let's shift into our picks for final order cutoff this coming Monday night, July 27th. We're gonna kick it off with Marvel. We're gonna start with Maestro number one. This is a book that I'm not super excited for, but there's one thing that does excite me. It is written by Peter David. I love Peter David books. Big Spider-Man 29.9 fan when he was writing that series. But a lot of people like this book and a lot of people like some of the covers that are coming out for it. Right, Future Imperfect has been one of those like long beloved um, kind of mini series in Marvel history. So it, it's kind of due time to bring back Maestro in some form. Um, we haven't seen a lot of heat necessarily on the character. There are some retailer exclusives, but I don't think this is one that is necessarily going to penetrate the secondary market unless there is some sort of crossover with Immortal Hulk. But um, even then, it, it, it's kind of a stretch. If anything is impacted, I think it would be those first appearances. So here we have a book from Boom Studios. You all know we're big fans of Boom Studios. On this channel, you also know we're a big Power Rangers fan. We're getting that Power Rangers Draken New Dawn number one of that three issue mini series, right? That's right. Now, this is a big series with a lot of heat on it because all you got to do is say, Lord Draken getting his own series and Power Ranger fans are immediately excited. But the events of Ranger Slayer and the Ranger Slayer one shot have put everything on its head. And now we're sitting here going, what is going to happen in this series? Um, if you have not checked out Ranger Slayer, Draken has fallen. Uh, Ranger Slayer has ascended into the role of Draken. And this is something that we did not anticipate coming into this new series. So some of these covers are blacked out. You got some spoiler covers um, that Boom has been real secretive. I imagine it has something to do with what's going on with Ranger Slayer. This is going to be a popular one. There's going to be reader buzz on this. Power Ranger fans are going to go crazy for this. Two incentives available, a 1 in 10 and a 1 in 25 variant. Um, definitely be on the lookout for those. And be on the lookout for the upcoming Simpleman's Comics exclusive variant. Partnered with the 616 Comics coming very soon. A special announcement will be made on the Burks Family 54 Comics YouTube channel. Boogity bow! We get that book that a lot of people are expecting, but may not know it's hitting final or cut off this Monday. We're talking about Thor number six. Number five left off with quite, I won't say a cliffhanger, but with people wanting more, especially myself. This has got some great covers. We also have an exclusive rant from our channel sponsor, Frankie's Comics. But if you haven't already gotten it, it is already sold out, that gorgeous piece, Moko. But Thor number six, are you excited, Jack? Yeah, I think this is uh, really indicative of what's going on right now with Donny Cates, right? His Venom run is on fire. His Thor run is on fire. Those are by far the two most popular runs Marvel Comics has going on on their slate. And really the only other, I would say, series in all of comics that's comparable is what's going on with Batman and Joker War or what's going on with Something's Killing the Children right now. And it's really the, kind of that battle for supremacy, that kind of like fatal five-way type of deal. But um, 
I, I would expect every single issue of Thor to be an issue that we're talking about on, on a monthly basis right here on the last call show. But this is another one coming on the heels of Black Winter that's certainly um, hot. Gabriel Delato incentive is going to draw people's attention. The Peach Romoco uh, exclusive from Frankie's Comics, they did multiple covers, uh, multiple versions of that cover, and they all sold out. The, the, the fever for Peach is real. Um, on top of the excitement for this series and these new characters. So Donny Cates is white hot right now. Um, I would expect anything he touches to continue to be flames. Yeah, I know a lot of places have sold out pre-orders also for that Gabriel Del Otto cover. I'm going to be honest, that's not my favorite Gabriel Del Otto. I actually like the War of the Realm store that one in 10 he did way better than this one. But people are buying it because it's Del Otto and it's an incentive for that hot book so I can understand why. Shifting over from Marvel to Image, going a little bit independent here. We are talking about Bitterroot number 10. This has been a great story. We always talk about how great story this is. But we've also been talking about those movie homage variants. This is going to have one for the movie Juice. Yeah, that's right. Now, I don't really care what it is that brings you into this series because I've long been talking about the fact that this is one of the best comics going in independent comics. It's, it's sure to be a hit office um and i'm a big big fan of this series so i love the fact that these awesome kind of movie poster homage covers have kind of brought the collector base in juice is a great film if you uh if you're not familiar tupac shakur kind of at his finest um as well as radio rahim and uh everything else that goes with having the juice and uh, i expect this cover to be as successful as some of the ones that we've seen in recent history yeah, outside of what the pro that movie, the program is one of the first ones I saw Omar Epps in. But also, if you're a fan of Sanford Green, make sure you check out Friends of the Channel, Comic Book Trap House. They're going to be having an interview with Sanford Green on that YouTube channel. We'll put a link in the description as well as a card to that YouTube channel so you guys can check that out. And if, like Jack said, if you guys are loving these covers but you're not reading the book, you're really doing yourself a disservice. Definitely recommend this series to a bunch of people. Getting over to DC Comics, we get that Dark Knight's Metal Guidebook number one. This one I find interesting because it's kind of giving you some backstory and a deeper look into a bunch of the characters that, that's taking place in Dark Knight's Death Metal right now. And it's got a bunch of great writers that included in this. You got Chip Zdarsky, you got James Tynan, you got Joshua Williamson, a bunch of others, Becky Cloonan as well. But I'm interested in reading some of this backstory on these characters. What about you, Jack? Well, yeah, and I think that also we've talked about this before, but when you have a miniseries that is as popular as Dark Knight's Metal and now Dark Knight's Death Metal, some of these one-shots and offshoot stories tend to be extremely important to the overall outlook of the story, even if it's just a guidebook. And not only that, they're definitely under-ordered oftentimes by retailers, and there's a one in 25 incentive for this, which certainly being a guidebook doesn't necessarily elicit um, a ton of orders. So it could be, could be a tough find. Sticking with DC, now these next two picks are not going to be any stranger to anyone. We've talked about this. We've talked about it on multiple videos, but we're also wanting to let you guys know that they're hitting last call. And the first one I'm talking about is that Nightwing number 73. We're all in on that Joker War right now. And this story, even before it was good, but with the tie-in to Joker War has been fantastic. That's right. And definitely The Last Call Show is a show that was born upon titles like this because it is important to get those orders in before that FOC cutoff period because you really do not want to be playing guessing games about whether or not you're going to be able to find this issue on the shelf because you just never know what's going to happen, right? We saw what happened with Batgirl 47 this week and some of the buzz that came as a result of that. We don't know when that next issue is going to hit like that. And you don't want to be left trying to chase that book. In the next book, we're talking about sticking with DC. Like we said before, we're talking about that Batman number 97. Now, 
I'm pretty sure if you're a comic fan and comic collector, you're ordering these already or it's already on your radar. But this is still Batman Joker War. We're loving this story. And it's got that one in 25 Harley Quinn variant. I'm not too hyped on that. I'm sticking with that Francesco Mantina cover B. Those have been my favorite this entire Batman run. So that's the one I'm going to be picking up. I actually like the Harley redesign. I've often vocalized my um, dislike for the direction that the Harley Quinn character has taken um, over the last several years. So I'm down for a redesign. And I think Punchline is going to be the character who pushes Harley in a different direction. Or at least that's what I'm hopeful for from DC Comics. But you're right. We don't have to sell anyone on this this series. Everybody knows what's going on here. But again, this is why we talk about this before that final order cutoff date so that you can save the most amount of money. If you're just simply putting these books on a pull list and picking them up the week they come out and saving 10%, you are doing yourself a disservice. Do your research. Find an LCS or find an online comic shop where you can save the most amount of money. Many stores are offering deep, deep discounts if you order before final order cut off and we're going to talk about one right now that's right one of those places to pre-order from is blackcapecomics.com this is the indie showcase portion of the show which is brought to you by blackcapecomics.com make sure you guys check them out if you're a fan of those indie comics they have a lot of those in stock including the ones we're about to talk about right now for pre-order for foc as well as a lot of other comic books to get that foc order in on And here we have from Source Point Press, No Heroin number three. Issue number one selling like fire already. Issue number two has already been being sold out. But we got number three hitting final order cutoff this Monday night and a good chance to get your pre-orders in, right? Yeah, it would be very easy to dismiss this, Brian, and simply say, well, look, it's an independent series. It's issue number three. This is only for readers. There's no secondary market value here. But we have evidence of the contrary because Dead End Kids, uh, which was also a three-issue miniseries from Source Point Press by Frank Gogol, it's all three issues ended up being $15 to $20 back issues on the secondary market. I kind of expect to see the same thing with no heroin, so I would be on the lookout. Stick with Source Point and Press. We got another release for Final Order Cutoff. We're talking about The Prisoner number one. We talk about how great horror comics are right now. This seems to fit that mold, doesn't it? It does. But listen, I could sell you on this book individually, but this is more of an opportunity for me to highlight the fact that this is exactly the type of book you want to pre-order. Source Point Press has had several books that have popped off on the secondary market, several number one issues. And most of the time, people are reactionary. These are not the books that are carried everywhere at every retail shop. These are not ones that a lot of stores are stocking heavily above what they're kind of typical pre-order readership is. So you want to get these orders in pre-FOC. If this is a book that excites you, if this is a book that you feel like is investable, or even if it's just a book that you personally want to read, head to blackkidcomics.com, get those pre-orders in. These guys will take care of you, ship it to you, and you'll have it right at your doorstep. So here we have a new book from Vault Comics, and we're talking about Shadow Service number one. We were just talking about how great horror comics are. This one kind of takes that horror element, turns it on its head a little bit, and adds a little bit of that mystery detective to it as well. That's right. Vault Comics is another publisher where we have seen them do horror right. Um, the, obviously, the plot is one that comes to mind right off the bat, as well as um, several others that they have. These released. Savage Shores. Yeah, these Savage Shores that they've released in the last couple of years. They do a variety of titles, um, definitely hit a, a bunch of different topics, but it seems like when Vault is doing um, their best work is when they're playing in that at that horror field. So this is one title to definitely have on your radar. Um, and those pulp variants, which I was actually kind of skeptical of at first because I felt like, why stop doing these awesome homages that they were doing um, that seemed to be connecting with an audience? But you know what? They followed it up with something else cool. So um, shout out to the team over at Vault Comics. So those are the indie books we have for Final Order Cuff. And remember, you can get all those pre-orders for FOC and more at blackcapecomics.com. Make sure you guys check out that site. Not only do they have those comics up there, 
but they have a lot of great prints as well for these indie titles. A lot of stuff that they were going to use for covers that may not have chosen to do. They have fantastic prints and they're all available up there right now at blackcapecomics.com. But with that being said, we also have some additional printings hitting FOC as well this week, right, Jack? That's right, Brian. I'd say we've got some. We've got quite a few, um, but that's good. Comics are back, and there are issues selling out and heading back for a late print. So we've got Adventure Man number two hitting a second print. Chew, spelled with a U, number one, hitting a second print. Goddamn Virgin Brides, number one, hitting a second print. Dark Knight's Death Metal, number one, hitting a second print. Deceased Dead Planet, number one, hitting a second print. Venom 25, hitting a third print, and Venom 26 hitting a second print, and Grief the Trade Paperback from Frank Gogol hitting a second print. So there's our picks, and there's also the additional prints. I also want to say one thing. I also get I often get messages on Instagram, Facebook, comments on the videos, people coming after FOC saying, hey, my comic store didn't order enough copies of this. I can't get a hold of it. That's the whole purpose of why we have this show we present these picks for you it gives you time to go into your lcs and say hey i want to order this book that window is open they can order it from diamond they can order it from ucs before that final order cutoff so even if they weren't going to order before a lot of times they will if your lcs is doing the right thing they should have no problem ordering you a copy before it hits final order cutoff but with that being said guys it's brian and jack with superman's comics we'll see you guys in the next video